Oh, howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to discuss projectile mechanics in depth. Uh, the reason for this is that 3.9 is shaping up to be a league in which a lot of bow skills are getting overhauled, so bows are going to be popular this league. Some people will be playing because they think that the bow skills will be particularly good in this league, and others just want something fresh and new and revamped. So for that reason, lots of people are going to be playing skills that involve bows, and many bow skills use projectiles. So firstly, what is a projectile skill? A skill is a projectile skill if it has the projectile tag. Uh, these gem tags can tell you a lot about gems, and basically a skill that has a projectile tag will, be in, will involve projectiles in some way. But basically, they're the shots fired by skills that have this tag. Now, just a quick note here that intuitively there are bow skill, like you would think that every single bow skill will be a projectile skill, and this is not true. So some of them, like Blast Rain, are AoE skills instead of projectile skills. And from a thematic sense, what this means is that you're targeting the ground. You're not firing a projectile that travels to an enemy. You're firing up in the air, your shot hits the targeted spot on the ground, and then it unleashes its payload, targeting the ground rather than targeting an, an enemy or creating an arrow that fires in a straight line. And so that's why Blast Rain is only an AoE skill. Uh, on the flip side, Toxic Rain has both the AoE and the projectile tags. That's a little bit different, and that implies that there is both a projectile being fired and also a payload that uh, targets the ground. However, for everything that I discuss here about projectiles, the key mechanic is, does this have the projectile tag? That's the key question that needs to be asked. So, projectiles have a hard limit of 150 units. Now that may not mean much to you, it certainly didn't mean much to me until I found this really helpful diagram online that shows what the, uh, what the sort of distance that is implied by 150 units is. Essentially it is a full length of a screen. Uh, so it's pretty close to the far left of the screen to the far right of the screen. That's about the maximum distance that a projectile can travel. If a projectile travels 150 units, then it falls to the ground dead. That's the end of the line. Now there are some mechanics that cause projectiles to pierce or chain. Others cause them to split, to fork, and to return. And these follow a strict hierarchy. So what happens is, projectiles will firstly check, do I have any ability to pierce? If they have the ability to pierce, then they will pierce straight away. And they will use up one of their pierces, and then they will check on the next target that they hit, oh, do I still have the ability to pierce? No, I don't. Okay, well, I'll go down the I'll go down the hierarchy and check. Do I have the ability to fork? And so on and so on. I'm going to go through all of these in hierarchy order. So just remember that piercing comes first. This can be of interest because piercing is probably mechanically the weakest of these of, uh, of these various projectile mechanics, and so it can be advantageous to players sometimes to deliberately take a zero pierce and to find ways to avoid picking up uh, pierce nodes on the tree or pierce on various items so that their shots don't pierce. And this allows them to make earlier advantage of forks and chains and returning projectiles and things like that. So let's go through each of these in turn. With a pierce, the projectile isn't consumed, it does its damage, unleashes its payload and then continues on its merry way and possibly hits another enemy behind the original target. So if we're having a look at this example here, uh, we've got this character sitting here. If, if they were to fire a projectile in the general direction of Perpetus over here, and it, would, and it had the ability to pierce twice, then that projectile would hit this skeleton first. It would pierce that skeleton and hit this skeleton. Then it would pierce that skeleton and hit this blackguard. It would not have the ability to pierce any further because it only had two pierces, and it's used both of them, and now it's struck another enemy. At this point, it would go down the hierarchy and check. I've used up all my pierces. Do I have any forks? Do I have any chains? And so on and so forth. If you're interested in looking for sources of pierce, your best options for it are either on skill gems themselves. Uh, several skill gems have quite considerable ability to pierce. Uh, or additionally, on the passive tree. Next up, we have fork. When a projectile forks, the projectile is consumed. It does its damage and unloads any payload that it's going to unload. 
and then two new copies of the projectile are created at 60 degree angles to the direction that the original one was travelling. So if the projectile was fired due north, like up, up like this, uh, where my mouse is, then and it struck an enemy right here, then at that point that projectile would be consumed, one would have head out at this direction, and one at this direction. So this one would be heading towards 10 o'clock on a clock face, this one towards 2 o'clock on a clock face. Uh, that's the angle spread of fork. Fork's really good if you want to hit multiple enemies with one shot. And if you, uh, if you have enemies that don't sort of conveniently line themselves up for piercing. So for instance, if a projectile was fired by this character, then they had fork, uh, and, and it was fired in this direction, it would strike this skeleton. The first one would fire off at approximately... Uh, might actually end up missing both of, both this monster and this blackguard here. Uh, the other one would fire in this direction and would probably miss these guys and hit one of these two instead. Uh, so that's if you're going one one goes that way, one goes that way. If instead you fired it up here uh, it, and it hit this monster first, one copy would be forked out that way and one would be forked out this way. Again, the angle is always 60 degrees in this case. The best source of fork in the game for archer characters is Rigwald's Quills. Rigwald's Quills are a very rare quiver. Uh, they come primarily from divination cards, also from sources of time-worn unique items. Uh, they're not normally available anymore. They were introduced in the Talisman League as a Talisman League exclusive item. Uh, but since then, there have been a couple of ways to get them. There is also a new divination card that is being added in the 3.9 patch and Metamorph League, which will provide a two implicit corrupted Rigwald's Quills. That's going to be monstrously expensive and will be something very, very powerful. I will point out that if you are using Rigwald's Quills, I highly recommend making sure that you have either zero or one total pierces on your passive tree, as it is my personal opinion that having more than one, more than one uh, pierce will severely decrease the power of the fork that you're gaining from Rigwald's Quills. And at that point, why use Rigwald's Quills? Use a different quiver instead, uh, such as Void Fletcher, if you're looking to, if you're not going to get the benefit from Rigwald's Quills, a best mod. Uh, next up, there is the pro uh, possibility for projectiles to split. And I'm naming this because it's being something that's being added in the new league. Fury Valve, this new Jade Amulet that is a Metamorph League exclusive item, uh, is a pretty juicy item. And it has some interesting mods. But firstly, we start skills fire two additional projectiles. Well, we already know that the item is good at this point. Uh, projectile speed is nice, resists are nice. But the big thing is modifiers to the number of projectiles instead apply to the number of targets projectiles split towards. What splitting projectiles mean, at least as far as we're able to tell so far, and this is just from a couple of uh, developer comments that have been made in the uh, on Reddit on the Conquerors of the Atlas and Metamorph League compiled information thread. You can have a look at those if you're interested. But the comments uh, indicate that when you fire a projectile that splits, it will basically strike one enemy, the projectile will be consumed, and then multiple new projectiles will be launched from that enemy, and they will be targeting nearby enemies. This will then allow you to, if you hit one enemy, say you've got the ability to split towards five uh, monsters, then you'll fire one enemy, uh, fire at one enemy in a pack, that projectile goes away, and then it, uh, it will fork into five copies of itself that will all strike nearby enemies, or point towards nearby enemies. At least that's my current understanding of the mechanics, and we're going to have to wait until Fury Valve has actually been looted in-game to be certain of this. Uh, if you're interested in getting splitting projectiles, this is the only source of them for uh, that's currently available in the game, and so you're just going to have to find this amulet, which I think might be particularly rare and particularly expensive. And yeah, it looks like it could be quite a juicy one. Uh, so splitting comes after forking and before chaining in the hierarchy, as far as we're aware at the moment, but again, that information is subject to change. We'll find that out once it goes live. Uh, next up, we have the projectile's chain mechanic. When a, projectile ch uh, when a projectile chains, the projectile is consumed, unleashes its payload, and then a new copy of that projectile is created that is aimed at a nearby enemy. This is a really good way to amp up the amount of damage that you're doing. Because the newly created projectile targets, intel uh, targets fairly intelligently, 
This means that chaining is more difficult to come by than forking, and forking is more difficult to come by than projectiles uh, being piercing. So for that reason, it's a bit harder to get your hands on projectile chaining. The best sources in the game are the Deadeye Ascendancy, uh, which has one node which will grant the ability for your projectiles to... Uh, the, the Ricochet node, which grants plus one chain to all projectiles. Uh, the Gloomfang Unique Amulet, which is going to be pretty rare in this league because it comes from either the Elder or one of his Guardians. And Shaper Bows. Rare bows that are Shaper-influenced and that have item level 85 or higher, which are going to be very rare again in this league, can roll a mod that allow, allows their projectiles to chain. Additionally, a very lucky Val, Val Orb Corruption on a Quiver can also give projectiles the ability to chain. Good stuff if you can get any of these, but uh, you will be paying quite a lot for them. Lastly, we have the ability for projectiles to return. This is quite niche. Uh, it's very hard to get your hands on it. In fact, about the only way you can do so is by anointing the passive, uh, your passive tree with Vengeant Cascade. This is, a gold, uh, this is a gold oil required amulet, and it can then be, you can imbue this onto your amulet. And what it causes your projectiles to do is once they have consumed all of their pierces, all of their forks, all of their, return, uh, their uh, not returns, all of their splitting and all of their chaining, once they've used up all of those mechanics, uh, they will then return to you. When they're on their way back to you, uh, they will pierce all targets until they come back to you, uh, meaning that you might be able to score a couple of extra hits with these. Vengeant Cascade sounds really, really powerful. In practice, most people report that it's disappointing. The reason for this is that an individual projectile under normal circumstances can only apply damage to an enemy once. And so no matter how many times it chains around or forks or whatever, uh, when, it when it's on its way back, it's deemed to be the same projectile. And so it's pretty unlikely for you to be able to hit enemies on the return shot with Vengeant Cascade. However, some people have found, that, have found a bit of success using this. I don't personally intend to uh, spend Golden Oils anointing Vengeant Cascade. I think I would rather anoint a powerful defensive uh, node on an amulet such as Constitution or Soul of Steel. Uh, but I thought I would give you the option if you are curious about it. Anyways, uh, hopefully that's a bit of an indication as to how projectile mechanics work. If you've got any comments or questions, definitely fire away below. And if you get lucky and discover a Fury Valve amulet in the new league, uh, definitely come back and confirm whether I'm right or wrong with some of the details of the splitting mechanic, because it is new to the game and some of it could be incorrect. But I'm going to leave it there. Uh, comments and questions fire away. Otherwise, I hope you have a good one and hope you have a great league start.